did time and time and time again. It is the exact opposite of the momentum that they got with the Tim Waltz pick. It is the exact opposite with the momentum that they got when Tim Waltz started campaigning on behalf of the campaign. <laughs> Obama first won the party's nomination nearly two decades ago. For Kamala Harris, that has translated into hundreds of millions of dollars in campaign donations, a flood of volunteers, and a boost in the polls. As Donald Trump watches his lead evaporate, both nationally and in the key battleground states, Politico reports he is, quote, finally recognizing he's at risk of losing the election unless he makes some changes. Well, there's no evidence of big changes coming from Trump, although after watching Harris's convention speech, he declared his administration would be, quote, great for women and their reproductive rights. That's quite a statement for a president who has also claimed credit for the rep Trump may be struggling and Harris may be surging, but if we've learned anything this summer, it's that momentum can be fleeting, and virtually every presidential candidate gets a convention bounce. Even the losers. Remember Michael Dukakis? After the 1988 Democratic Convention in Atlanta, he had a 17-point lead over George H.W. Bush in the Gallup poll. And then he went on to lose in an electoral landslide greater than any we have seen since. Trump has been trying to portray Kamala Harris as a left-wing radical. But so far, anyway, that hasn't stuck. And in Chicago, Harris's convention sounded a decidedly moderate tone. In her speech, Harris promised to be tough on crime, tough on the border, tough on Iran and China. And far from supporting the arms embargo many on the left had demanded, she promised to defend Israel. There was no talk of taking on big corporations or the ultra-wealthy, no promises of Medicare for all. Gone were many of the progressive positions like, I, I like how we just assume that all of that is good for the election. Like, the presumption here is that, by mainstream media, that that was so solid of her. She did a phenomenal job of reacting to the Republican Party by showing that she is a moderate. This is as, it's, it's just spin. You are for believing this. This was my biggest fear with this campaign, as I repeated Time and time and time again. It is the exact opposite of the momentum that they got with the Tim Waltz pick. It is the exact opposite with the momentum that they got when Tim Waltz started campaigning on behalf of the campaign. The idea that Republicans are going to call you radical and then you're going to be like, no, 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 I'm a moderate, I'm a moderate, I promise, is the lie that the liberal media reiterates on a regular basis. You are, if you believe it, I'm sorry. Everybody loves saying, oh, dude, you're so wrong. People pull this stuff. You're so wrong. You're so silly. Okay? Just remember that the media has the capacity to shape the narrative and make you feel like you came up with certain conclusions on your own, but you didn't actually come up with those conclusions on your own. You came up with it because you watched the media and they told you so. That's precisely why you were wrong when you were in here telling me that Joe Biden can't get swapped out and I was right, okay? Because you watched the media and they told you in the beginning that this was a bad idea. Your consent was manufactured. You need to think for yourself. There are plenty of polls that show progressive policies are actually pretty reliable. There is plenty of evidence that shows that a progressive ballot measure as a standalone entity is one of the most successful initiatives in American politics. Okay? That's it. Progressive policies are very popular across the board. People want something to vote for. That's it. Stop listening to Republicans. Stop letting them lead the conversation. Stop retriangulating in an effort to defend yourself against them. You look weak. You lose out on the momentum. You lose out on your base of support. You are never going to be able to penetrate the minds of many likely Republican Party voters who think you're a communist and that is bad. You can say you're not a communist all day, every day, forever, okay? They will still call you a communist. They say Nancy Pelosi is a communist. Stop cucking your own message, okay? Just like not a single person 
in the United States of America believes that Donald Trump is actually going to protect women's reproductive rights. No one in America believes you're going to be protective over the border. That's why people don't say, oh, I like this because I personally care about this. They instead come into my chat and say, Hassan, don't you think we're far too progressive? There's another American out there that is way different than you and I, who actually does think that Kamala Harris must do strong, uh, you know, have a, have a muscular militant stance because she's a woman. Uh, there's another guy out there, not me, but another guy out there who probably thinks it's great that she's doing a right-wing border policy. No, there isn't. No, there isn't. That guy is the same guy that said they were a Biden dead ender. That guy is the same guy that is a Democratic Party loyalist. They do not think when MSNBC tells them to jump, they say how high. They just regurgitate and they vote down ballot Democrat. That's not a real guy, okay? That guy is never going to turn around and be like, well, I guess I'm voting for the Republicans now because all of a sudden, the Democratic Party is telling me after literally 30 years of being pro-immigration that now, this time around, they're not going to be pro-immigration. You voted for 30 years for the pro-immigrant party. You voted for the pro-immigrant party in 2020. Now you all of a sudden want to vote for the anti-immigrant party? That's delusional. That's the reason why so many literally keep talking about how they actually had to do this for some other mythical voter. Have some backbone and some conviction and stand on what you will do for the American people. That's it. Because that's what politics is. Politics is not about making this idiotic calculation every goddamn four years of like, oh, the other side is far worse. The other side is far worse. Politics, for most people, okay, is about what will you give me? And if neither party gives you anything or even is, in, is, is even trying to captivate you and get your attention and get you to go out and vote, that's how you arrive at a plurality of voter-eligible population that don't vote. There's obviously a multitude of different factors at play here. The Electoral College makes it seem like if you're in a blue state, you don't have to vote because it's going to go blue anyway. If you're Republican in a blue state, it doesn't matter. That obviously cuts across as well. But beyond that, beyond that, the fact that it's not a national holiday or federal holiday, that makes it hard to vote as well. It's on a work day. But most consequentially, people will not vote for someone, especially when voting is difficult to begin with, it's not as easy as you think, especially if you've never voted for uh, someone before, if you're not registered to fucking vote, voting is a difficult process. It's a confusing process. So you need to activate someone. You need to make them curious. You need to make them interested. You need to make them a loyal soldier for you. And the only way you can do that is not by constantly chirping about how Republicans are fascists, Republicans are fascists. They are. We know it's not us that you need to convince. Or even if it was us that you need to convince, you would have to probably give us some concessions, okay? You obviously don't care enough. You obviously don't think that this vote here matters because you're not giving us any concessions. You're not giving us the time of day. If you did, you'd be trying to suck our, you'd be trying to suck our cocks in the same way that you're trying to suck Republican cocks every day, okay? You want to suck Republican cocks. That's all you want to do. You want to suck in Republicans. If you want progressive voters to go out and vote for you, you need to suck progressive cock, okay? You obviously don't care enough. You think it's a larger, more significant constituency out there. There's some guy out there that's going to do this. You can't have it both ways. You can't suck both cocks at the same time, okay? My cock only. Anyway, but beyond, you know, sucking progressive, which is neither here nor there, okay? You need to at least tell people who don't normally vote, if you want them to come out and vote for you, what you're going to do for them. That's it. And if you don't do that, then yeah, you're still going to have a plurality of people who do not vote. That's it. Positions Kamala Harris herself took when she launched her first campaign to be the Democratic presidential nominee some five years ago. The Kamala Harris on the stage in Chicago seemed more eager to appeal <laughs> to moderates and disaffected Republicans than the party's liberal activists. We'll see what Republicans have to say about all that shortly. But what about progressives in her own party? What do they think? There is nobody better to ask than our next guest, Senator Bernie Sanders. 
Senator Sanders, welcome to this week. Before we get to the convention and all that, I want to ask you about the news overnight out of Israel. Do these attacks from Hezbollah uh, underscore that Israel is still very much under threat? Well, I think clearly we have a very volatile situation in the Middle East. We have had that for a long time now. Uh, the good news is it appears that both Hezbollah and Israel are trying to de-escalate. Uh, I hope that happens, and I hope we reach a ceasefire uh, with Hamas, Israel and Hamas, as soon as possible. All right, let, let me ask you about the convention. What, what was your take on the messaging from Kamala Harris in Chicago? Well, I think the energy coming out of that convention was very high. I think it's going to be a rough campaign. Uh, I think the vice president now has a very good chance to win it. She's certainly going to win uh, the popular vote by millions of votes, and I think she has a great chance to win many of the battleground states, and I intend to do everything that I can uh, to see, see that she wins. Uh, my own guess is, Jonathan, that I think people are growing tired and fatigued uh, with Trump's consistent and outrageous lies. Uh, and I think uh, no matter what Kamala Harris, I think they want stability uh, in the White House. Uh, they want somebody who they can trust. Uh, and I think they understand that is not the person that Donald Trump is. I want to play for you a few lines from her speech about her role, what her role would be as commander in chief. Take a listen. As commander in chief, I will ensure America always has the strongest, most lethal fighting force in the world. I will always stand up for Israel's right to defend itself. And I will always ensure Israel has the ability to defend itself. I will never hesitate to take whatever action is necessary to defend our forces. He's so far. There's no, let's see what he says, but. I mean, that, that part of the speech is so, it is the, the worst, right? Not even the, like, Israel-Palestine part. Because, obviously, that's a given, okay? That's a given, that's a given, that's a given, that's a given. You know, ultra-Zionism, you already know how it is, okay? Democratic Party, Republican Party, they're aligned on this. But, like, the idea that, like, she's also... She's in all black because of the funeral for any ceasefire propositions. Yeah. Like, the, we're going to have the most lethal military. Like, that is such an insane point. Isn't lethality the point of the military? Yeah. That's why they don't call the military the department, okay? There's a reason why they call it the defense department. It used to be called the war department. Why don't they call it that anymore? Because, obviously, words are supposed to hide the truth. So when you actually unshackle and unrestrict dog whistles and openly say what that means, that means you're going to be even more right wing than the average Democrat. Hello? What is happening? I thought liberals were the ones who were super primed to aesthetics and optics. and sh What happened? All of a sudden, you guys forgot optics matter? What happened? Okay, but they still openly say lethal aid. Dog, that's the whole point. They call it aid. They call it aid. They call weapons aid. You're doing the thing that I'm talking about. Like, Democrats do the thing, or, or the American State Department does the thing that I'm literally talking about by calling it aid. They're still hiding what it actually is. Weapons. I was in awe. There's so many people were, like, like trying to dunk on me on that point about, like, the lethality of the military. It's like, you guys are disgusting, dude. I mean, not you in the chat, but all these, like, ass Ukrainian flag in the bio. Literally, like, oh, hoorah, baby. That's American military mind, baby. Hell yeah, brother. It's like, dude, you live in Estonia, okay? Shut the up and enjoy your 55 to 60% female population and your fiber optic cables and your goddamn internet-based voting system, okay? Why the f*** do you think this matters to you? Shut the f*** up! God! I hate NATO, but especially because of like that, okay? ...and our interests against Iran and Iran-backed... Like, all it takes is me to talk to like a baltic nato guy for me to lose my mind and become a z pusher okay literally it's like a reincarnation of gay hitler over there it's crazy dude i don't understand it like welcome back hitler but this time a homosexual hitler okay the nato baltic sandies are so unimaginably lame and so unimaginably pro-american military it's not your it's our you don't have to stop larping you don't live in Texas. You live in Estonia. Shut the f up. I hate it. Terrorist. Now, I've been covering you for a long time. I've heard you talk about the need to cut the Pentagon's 
budget. Uh, obviously, you've been an advocate of, of the arms embargo. Well, let me Israel. just say, Jonathan, yeah. in, in all due respect, the United States is now spending uh, more than the next 10 nations combined True. on defense. If you hate NATO, why should America care about Palestine? Wait, what? The reason why I hate NATO is also the reason why I hate what America's doing in Israel uh, and allowing Israel to do to Palestine. What the fuck are you talking about? It's just another arm of imperialism. This doesn't mean that I'm pro-Russia by any means, by the way. The Russian, the Russian government, okay? Vladimir Putin, the Russian government, they should have never invaded Ukraine. They're insane. You understand? They're insane, and they're violent, and they're engaging in an immoral, unjustifiable act by invading another country, violating Ukrainian sovereignty. Having said that, however, we do that all day, every day, okay? Give me a goddamn break. I'm Turkish, dude. Of course I don't like NATO. I'm a Turkish leftist. What the fuck would I like NATO? It literally created a fascist movement in the goddamn country. So I agree with the vice president. We want the strongest defense uh, in the world. Uh, but I do think enough is enough. You're seeing uh, military contractors, profits soaring. Uh, and I think we can have the strongest defense in the world without spending a trillion dollars a year. But, but what, what about the, the tone she struck there, though, emphasizing the need to have the most lethal force, talking about uh, uh, being willing to take on uh, Iran uh, and, and vowing to give Israel whatever it needs to defend itself? Well, look, what I happen to believe and what I try to point out, I try to make in my remarks, is that we have a nation today where 60 percent of our people are living paycheck to paycheck at a time when we have more income and wealth inequality than we have ever had in the history of this country. So I happen to believe it's important that we end the embarrassment of having the highest rate of childhood poverty of almost any major country on earth. That's why I'm delighted that she is talking about making the child tax credit, which lowered childhood poverty by 40 percent as a result of the American Rescue Plan, permanent. I happen to believe, and I hope she will support, expanding Social Security by lifting the cap on taxable income so we can increase Social Security benefits. I hope we can move toward expanding Medicare to cover hearing, dental, and vision. These are popular ideas. Every poll that's out there say that it's... It's so funny that Bernie's like, hey, but remember, like, all these good policies that she should be running on? He's like, bro, you're right. Like, it's, it's good. Like, I'm glad you're stumping for these good policies. But, like, she ain't running on it. That's the whole point. That's what's so frustrating about this is, like, Bernie's right. Bernie is literally right. I'm willing to bet there are more Americans that would be willing to overlook some of the other consequential problems like the top of the hour ad break under the Kamala administration where the avoidance fee is still $6 a month instead of the $5 it was under the Trump administration. And yet there's still a free one, obviously, in the form of a Twitch Prime where you connect your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month, use it on your favorite broadcaster, hopefully that's me. But, like, um, people would be willing to overlook that at the top of the hour. I mean, that would be a mistake, however, because you would be looking at a three-minute ad break unless you get gifted a sub if you're lucky here's a three-minute ad break now problem is problem is bernie sanders is right he was always right and he's right here as well kamala harris should drop all this weird trying to retriangulate her messaging to appear more moderate and focus on good policies policies that help people that's it that's what you're supposed to do as a politician god we are so cynical the part of the problem with the with the democratic party's base of support at least like the most like the most loud parts of democrats online is that they constantly chirp and larp as though they are dnc operatives getting paid by the democratic party to like tell people like you don't understand it's not for you stupid you need to shut up and vote it's for all these other people that are magically going to be like yeah i don't really care about anything i just want like a strong military that's not a guy man and even if there is a guy like that out there who's like yeah i want a strong military okay guess what that guy also needs easier access to health care okay cheaper food cheaper groceries do you understand what i'm saying you get it why was it that everyone was laughing alongside me when i was constantly making fun of joe biden for being like we did nato was it only because he was older that was funny no because there's no one out there outside of the dmv that isn't like a military industrial complex defense contractor slash like a guy who is like heavily invested in the military industrial complex that goes oh man thank god we did nato okay that's not a real voter that's not a person that's not a person okay there is no AUKUS voter. There is no Five Eyes voter in the United States of America. Holy sh Exactly what the American people want. The American people are sick and tired of seeing the people on top doing phenomenally well 
while they are struggling. And I think this is something that the vice president understands. As you know, uh, uncommitted delegates and other progressives have been demanding a pro-Palestinian speaker uh, get a... What the f Am I missing something? Are all those policies just read off? She is running on? CTC tax changes, taxing business of rich people a lot more, lowering prices. Yes, she is running on them. I don't think people understand. I am worried and upset that that wasn't the main focus of her, like, acceptance speech, where she basically revealed herself to the broadest audience she's actually shown herself to thus far. I am mad that she spent time talking about, you know, the long of the law and the long of the American military and the long of Border Patrol, Customs and Border Patrol, that's going to purge Guatemalan migrants with expediency instead of those things. She should be running on those things. She especially should not be running on the border because that's a losing argument anyway. And everyone in here since that speech keeps coming and coping and saying, oh, dude, you don't get it. She did this for some other guy, not you, not me, but for some other guy. There's a guy out there, I promise you, that wanted to hear these things. Otherwise, he would have thought she's not strong enough. People that look at her and go, that's a woman, she's not strong, are not going to be convinced by how aggro she is about the military ass. They think she's a woman and therefore incapable of leading. You know how you can get that person to come on board, though? Well, she's a woman, but at least she says she's going to make grocery prices cheaper. And I like that. So I'll overlook that reality and vote for the black woman. That's it. That's how politics works. It's that simple. And yet we play this song and dance and make it so much more complicated. Why did you... Why did you ban the guy in the midst of me talking about how Kamala Harris should run on the price of groceries being expensive and how she's going to regulate that? He responded with yourself, Hassan. Well, his name is Deadly Mr. Merchant, so I assume he's a groiper. First message in the chat, yourself, Hassan. Unban this guy. Let's hear what else, what other wonderful things he has to say. Nobody believes Democrats when they say they are going to be. Nobody believes Democrats when they say they're going to be militant on the border. Okay. All you've done is prime your base into thinking you have to be militant on the border. All you've done is prime your base into being an advocate for border control, more border control, more border enforcement, more deportation, more camps. That's all you did. You didn't actually change the outcome of the race you didn't win the republicans over what is this walking wanderer would you rather be an african-american slave during the american slave trade or an armenian in the ottoman empire would you rather sit on it and eat a pie or sit on a pie and eat it wow that's actually a pretty that's crazy would you rather sit on it and eat a pie or sit on a pie and eat it is like you, you got me. Like, I don't know what the correct answer there is. That's crazy. Also, th both of these are very hard questions to answer. Like, being black, uh, being black and, and having to be enslaved versus being in the Armenian is like, dude, I don't know. Both are pretty awful. I don't know which one, like, because the... the Slave trade is also of a different sort. I don't really know what the. Sitting on an eating pie sounds like a two for one for me. <laughs> Those are some terrible choices, man. I'm gonna go with the other third option that uh, I believe we can get here. Okay, how about that? Hey, credit to a Turk for actually admitting Armenia existed, though. Hello, welcome to the Hassan Ivy broadcast. Why the fuck do you think that I don't? Like, <laughs> I'm not exactly known for being a denier, no matter how hard my haters should have present me as that. How do you sit on the internet and talk knowing so many people dislike you? Not because you speak the truth, but because you're a human. Um... Easy, easy question, easy answer. I'm willing to bet that virtually 99% of people, if presented with the options of a guy 
who goes into someone else's community and goes, yeah, you should yourself versus the guy who believes in universal health care. Like, which one is the worst person? They probably would think you're the worst person. The only difference is you've deluded yourself in the communities that you exist in online into thinking that you're doing something virtuous by doing this, that you're somehow fighting a good battle. I still want you to have health care regardless of your opinion on me. I still want you to be able to have an ease of access uh, to, to have an opportunity for upward social mobility, regardless of your opinion of me. I still want you to be able to get more from your work, to be able to have more autonomy in your workplace, regardless of your opinion of me, okay? That's the difference between you and I. You want me to myself. I want you, regardless of your opinions, to actually have a better life. Because I believe that if you have a better life, then you inevitably will be less angry. Because... What motivates someone to do such a thing like this online is a ton of anger and resentment. Someone primed you into thinking that I am your enemy. Someone primed you into thinking that I'm the worst person you've ever encountered. Okay? Someone also primed you into thinking that a lot of people dislike me. You probably deluded yourself. In Most people don't know who the f I am. Okay? Ain't nobody knows or gives a shit about me. But you probably come from a community where they do. And they're really, really, really invested in how bad I am. And the thing is, I'm imperfect. I'm a human being, okay? I sometimes uh, engage in hypocrisy just like we all do, okay? The difference is, if you have, if you have truly awful material circumstances, only then are you allowed to feel this way about another human that you do not know. You don't know me at all, okay? You have no idea who I am. You don't even know what values I believe and espouse. You've been deluded into thinking that I am somehow hypocritical and actually against those values that I espouse because other people have primed you into thinking this way. You've been deluded. You've been duped. And I personally believe that if you, okay, if you had some of the problems that are probably weighing on your consciousness on a daily basis, cost of living, the fact that like your landlord's going to f you over, maybe you don't have enough money at the end of the month to pay for your rent and also budget for funds that you want to do. Seeing someone like myself in a position of so much privilege probably frustrates you. And you're like, this guy's rich. He has everything. And he's still chirping. He's just sitting on his ass. All he does is watch YouTube videos. This guy. Okay. I believe that you absolutely you absolutely would be not doing this kind of sh if you had at least some of those problems solved, okay? You'd be a healthier, happier person. One of the people who wanted to do yourself, made fun of you for being woke, etc. usually the eat the rich shirt type meme he saw, got really drunk last Fabu February. Oh yeah, that guy, I remember, got really drunk last February and ran at the LASD with a sword that was engraved with Christ the King and got aired out by like 30 shots before he could reach them. I think about that guy every time there's a chatter like that. Fix your life, bro. Yeah, remember that guy? Did I say February? February, sorry. Yeah, he used to love getting drunk and like creeping people out on this website. Many such cases on Twitter, I mean. The hell I didn't know that? No, he's a famous Twitter guy. He was like, he had an account on Twitter. He was one of those like, this isn't like CIA chat. Rad Milk, yeah, Rad Milk on Twitter. That guy. No, no, that's real. Anyway, this guy unfollowed me, so he has to wait. He has to refollow me and wait so we can like write anything else in the chat. But yeah, LASD is the L Los Angeles Sheriff's Department. Bro, I genuinely don't understand how you have so much patience. For advocating for stuff that are against your own interests because you're rich for the benefit of people who are so against their own interests. I'll be living in my palace somewhere and tell the peasants to go themselves. I'll live in the grifter life. Well, because like these are things that I believed when I didn't have money, you know, that's it. 
And why the would I change my attitude? No, not Rab Milk. That's a totally different person. Chad. No, it was Rab Milk. Do not challenge me, law. I knew rat milk for 10 years, stupid fucks. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, this is the dude. Something that I learned by watching you respond to people like this is that most persons, including myself, really do forget there's a sad, angry person behind every toxic comment made out there on the internet. Usually the solution is to ignore it, but I like your approach much better. Yeah. I get it, dude. I get it. There's a lot of anger out there. There's a lot of people who are angry, okay? There's a lot of people who are angry and resentful. Some Like, they're not... Just like evil people, okay? I mean, this guy did a lot of evil, so he might be maybe a little bit different. But like most people, most people, it says he died. It can't be that chatter. No, dude. This person is an analog for that level of resentment that that chatter is demonstrating. There's a lot of sad and angry people out there, okay? There is a lot of sad and angry people out there. It's the same exact energy of like carrying on certain resentments. And just like attacking a person online that you've never fucking met before. Thinking that they're like a genuinely bad, evil individual. Thinking that you're doing something virtuous by fighting this battle. Where you're like, ooh, yeah, I told someone that they need to kill themselves online. And that someone is someone like myself, too. There's like plenty of people out there who I understand why you would be like, you know, yourself, too. Anyway. slot at the convention and uh, convention organizers refused. Was that a mistake? Well, I happen to think and my views uh, in this area are very different from uh, I happen to think that we should not be giving another nickel uh, to Netanyahu's right wing extremist government. They certainly had a right to defend themselves against the atrocious Hamas attack. Boo. They never had the right, do not have the right to go to war against the entire Palestinian people, 40,000, injure 80,000, and destroy the health care system. I used to be a hater, but simmered down, held my mouth shut, and just tuned in to really see your opinions instead of what I heard or, or my prejudices. Love you now. There you go. ...system and the civilian infrastructure. What's going on and lead to the starvation of thousands and thousands of children. American taxpayer dollars should not go to starve children in Gaza. That is my view. Others may disagree with me. You see any daylight between... Holy... I know someone who was friends IRO with Rad Milk. It was incredibly sad about what happened to him and the path that all went down. RIP every y'all. Shack and joke with this person was a person. He had people who loved him. Yeah, M. Hud has an answer to that. He was literally a piece of... Who choked his girlfriend Ursula until he's... Uh, until her eyes were bleeding fast. He spent his last months on Earth calling me and my friends pedophiles. Yeah. Yeah, no, he was an insane person. He wasn't just like a poser. He was like, dub. Yeah. Biden's view on this and Kamala Harris's view? Well, I hope so. I think, you know... See, originally by secondhand reports, I got negatively polarized towards you, but then I had to just check it out myself, and now I can't leave this place. That's what I'm saying. There's That's the reason why I, I explain to people, your haters don't want you to see this, King. No, they do. They hate this. My haters hate this more. They can't understand it, and they get extra mad. I didn't want to watch you at first because it was an ABBA and Preach Watcher until my friend put me on. That's all it takes sometimes. That's why I tell you guys, when you have friends that are like, uh, you know, they have these like insane opinions of me. Uh, remember that like, remember that they're, uh, remember that they're uh, misguided. Gift loser. Your haters can be a pipeline to your viewing experience. Sometimes they are, but a lot of people don't leave that space. Usually they just get negatively polarized and they just stay at that place. <sighs> um, where were we? Yeah. Word of mouth on you is way too harsh. After watching you, you're far more reasonable than people to give credit for It's because if you're here, that means you're probably extremely online, okay? And extremely online communities have incredibly polarized opinions on me. 
especially after in the month of August in 2021, I purchased the house. Okay. Everything changed when I got doxxed. Literally everything changed when I got doxxed. After that, uh, everyone was like, this guy's socialist, but owns a mega mansion castle. Okay. Usually most people don't pay attention to anything. They don't pay attention to anything. They don't like really, they don't have time. And I get that. Why the f should they? Who the f has time to be like, well, let me go investigate further to see what like everyone is saying about this guy, if it's correct or not. Okay. I have an old coworker who's destiny pilled and I literally can't even play video games with him anymore because he always wants to talk about Israel or your $1,000 shirt or some feels bad. He lost his job and now just stays online debating all day. Yeah. My brother-in-law is an asthma gold watcher and hates you. How can I convince him that you're a good guy? I don't know. Show him like something that he cares about that I also have advocated for. That's usually all it takes. There's a number of there. Yeah, I did get docs before I even moved into the house. Yeah, I've known ever since 2012 or so uh, or so just online. It used to be cool and just got more negative and evil over the years. Sad situation all around. But I've always uh, but I'm always reminded of it when there are chatters to tell us on to yourself or whatever. Yeah. You know, in all fairness, the vice president, you know, she's been the candidate for all of one month. And it's been a mm -hmm. hell of a month. You have to organize the convention, select the vice presidential campaign, get out on the campaign trail. So they are still working through their policies. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, I hope very much that the conclusion that will be reached is that Netanyahu and his right wing. Yeah, it's like whenever you hang out with a new content creator and they're like, whoa, I never thought you were so chill. Like people just need to give you a chance. That's it. So I try to I try to do my my uh, very best to stay on message and be as consistent as possible. Eventually, no matter how aggressive you are, unless you're like literally a Nazi pedophile. OK, unless you are straight up a Nazi pedophile, you probably are going to be like, OK, maybe I was wrong about this. OK, that's it. Extremist government, which has received tens of billions of dollars of aid from the U.S., should not continue to receive that aid unless there is a radical change in their policies to the people, uh, to the Palestinian people in Gaza and in the West when, Bank, by the way. And, and, and on immigration, when Harris ran for the Democratic nomination against you and others in, in 2020, she said she favored decriminalizing uh, illegal border crossing. She even suggested she was she would be in favor of abolishing ICE. Uh, now, of course, she's taking uh, at least rhetorically a much tougher line on border security. Take a look at this uh, one of her very first ads as the presidential nominee. Kamala Harris has spent decades fighting crime. As a border state prosecutor, she took on drug cartels and jailed gang members for smuggling weapons and drugs across the border. As vice president, she backed the toughest border control bill in decades. And as president, she will hire thousands more border agents and crack down on fentanyl and human trafficking. Fixing the border is tough. So is Kamala Harris. What do you make of her transformation on this issue? Well, I don't think it's a question of transformation. We have a crisis at the border. We've got to make sure the fentanyl does not get into this country. We have to crack down on illegal immigration. But what we need is comprehensive oh immigration reform. I mean, you got God knows how many young people in this country. Oh, dude, you can't get a Democrat. You can't get one goddamn Democrat to be reasonable about this. It's so crazy. I will never, I will never stop being stubborn on this issue, okay? Just like the crime, okay? It's a panic completely concocted by right-wing reactionary sentiments. It is, it is not born out of real genuine concern is not born out of like a real examination okay it's not born out of a a real examination of the data it is just completely made up and we're just running with it and not only are we running with it but we're running we're bouldering towards fascism as an immigration attorney it drives me crazy it makes me so mad dude it makes me so mad it is i mean yeah bernie was also not exactly uh, fond of immigration even back in the day. Like, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. It's just like a totally made up phenomena. Bernie, what are you doing? It's just made up. Yeah, I bet an attorney is watching. Brother, I was just at the DNC. It is not that shocking to have immigration attorneys watching me, okay? It was shocking to find out that there was mayors of whole ass towns watching me. What the f are you talking about? An immigration attorney is like the most obvious person to be watching. Sometimes I have literal attorneys here staying at my house public defenders well former public defenders i'm literally an attorney watching law i know people people just project they're like nah dude i ain't got nothing going on in my life so obviously everyone else must be the same boat that's it so so that's the thing actually like 
it's it's actually shocking that Bernie is is bad uh, is on this message, especially because like yell about him all the time and lie about him all the time. He doesn't cave. He doesn't capitulate. He doesn't concede. You know, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that he's like. He's been consistent his whole life. Why now? I mean, he's also been consistently not great on immigration. That was like the one issue they left on because his base, his progressive support moved him to the left on that issue. He used to say uh, amnesty is like a, like a Koch brother proposal. Like he used to say, well, not amnesty, but like open borders are a dream, a pipe dream for the right. The result of DACA, who deserve to gain citizenship. We need workers, and we need workers in this country. A lot of labor shortages all over America where immigrants can play an important role. So keeping people from illegally entering the country obviously is the right thing to do. But we need comprehensive immigration reform, and I suspect that but, is what the vice president supports. But, but if you take a look at that ad, one thing that I found striking is if you look, and I think we have the, uh, the images here, there are at least three points in that ad that show the, bo the border wall, Donald Trump's border wall. Is it now the position of the Democrats that they favor the border wall? Well, you, you can ask the Harris campaign about that ad. That's the first that I've seen it. Bottom line is I think there's wide recognition in this country, and we've had some success. I think the number of illegal immigrants coming in recently. Good question. Don't you think that's hypocritical? A question more people will be asking Kamala Harris when she actually ends up doing some interviews, which she probably won't. He has gone sat down substantially. That is a major issue, and we've got to continue to do that. But at the end of the day, what we need is comprehensive immigration reform. But, but the, the immigration, and you said it wasn't a transformation, there's clearly a change in emphasis on it. She is also, in her first campaign, she supported... By the way, the reason why they're cooking Bernie right now is because the Harris campaign is sending out surrogates to get the shellacking because she doesn't want to get it. That's what's going on right now. And of course, the Democrats haven't figured out an adequate way to fucking message it. What? You also have this guy that I swear watches you? What? What I learned by playing Magic the Gathering with a Marine running for Senate? I have no idea who this guy is. I don't know why you're saying that. Anyways, Medicare for all, like you. Uh, she uh, supported a ban on fracking and offshore, uh, offshore uh, oil drilling. Do you think Bernie will get more right wing over time with the rest of the party? Brother, how much more time does he have? Like, no disrespect, but he's already 800 years old. What do you mean? Th these are clearly new positions now that she's well, taking. You know, why, Jonathan, why is that? Let me, just, let me just say this. Yeah. You go out, you do a poll, as I have done, and you ask the American people whether or not health care is a human right. Yeah, by the way, this interview with Bernie is showing how vulnerable Kamala is because there's no way her surrogates are going to be able to defend her coherently. Yeah. If only there was someone who just kept saying, hey, Kamala Harris, drop this border. Never talk about it again. Let's just move. Let's make bygones be bygones. Let's make let's make believe that, like, you're totally a separate person than the Joe Biden administration because they are going to cook your ass alive now that you're pro building a goddamn wall. OK, if only there was a guy like that who may or may not have had Kamala Harris campaign staffers watching him, who could have, you know, who could have potentially not made this massive mistake. I mean, it's already late to retract. No, it's never late. Just never brought, never bring it up again. You can always deflect. You can always move away, okay? You can always move away. You can always use much more favorable, much more valuable forms of opposition like abortion or progressive policies. The thing is, Republicans are reactionary. OK, which means they're easy to manipulate. They have to react to whatever proposal you put out there. So if you don't put out any proposals, then they're going to move the conversation more and more to the right. You can never let them dominate the conversation. Flood the market with policies. Show everybody that those policies are good. Let them be in opposition to said policies. OK, let them come out and be like, we can't be feeding children in schools. That would be communism. Oh, what a dream. Can you imagine? These are policies that help Republicans, okay? You think Republicans don't have children? You think they don't need to feed their kids? You think Republicans don't have kids? They don't like the child tax credit? It's so dumb. Give them something to negatively message on. But if you don't do that, then they're going to hammer your ass on all the positions that you've moved to the right on. They don't like their kids, though? No, that's silly, okay? We're not talking about, like, the biggest losers in the Republican base of support. We're talking about, like lifelong Republicans who just vote and don't really think about it. And whether we should do what every other major country on earth does 
and guarantee health care to all of our people, the answer is yes. Should we be spending twice as much per capita on health care? One of the craziest parts about this conversation, one of the craziest issues here is that, like, Donald Trump is actually, being the endless room reader that he is, has dropped certain Republican policies or Republican lines of communication that, like, the previous Republican Party would never do. Like, they never talk about the deficit, okay? Nikki Haley tried to bring it back, but hey, nobody give a f about the deficit, dog. Nobody cares. Republicans never actually cared about it either. They just used that as a mechanism to... Uh, to, to stop progressive legislation from pushing through. Paygo was one of the worst things that Nancy Pelosi advocated for, which is why I will be a lifelong hater of Nancy Pelosi, even though I put that on a brief hiatus because of all the great things that she did, okay? But, like, it's a gift. It's a gift to the Democrats that the Republicans have completely dropped some of these, like, classic anti-progressive uh, agenda items. They just keep calling it communism and moving on. You know, like there's no re yeah, there's no austerity justification from the Republican Party anymore. So use that to your advantage. By 85 million people being uninsured or underinsured. I, I Most of the American people understand, I fully understand the understand. system is broken. Yeah. So Kamala Harris and I have a disagreement. I do believe in Medicare for all. I think the current system is dysfunctional and broken. She has a different point of view. But right now, Kamala Harris is running against Donald Trump. Let's see what Fox is saying about TikTok. Gen Z saying Kamala's campaign is all... ...to inviting influencers to the conventions. Both the Harris and Trump campaign are getting creative to reach the more than 41 million Gen Z voters that are eligible to cast a ballot this year. I'm here with Scout at the dog park along the Mississippi doing our first entry into TikTok, or as he and I say, Tim Talk. Guys, right, JD, we want to welcome you to TikTok. We got some, uh, some gifts. Thanks, man. <laughs> I appreciate it, too. Madam Vice President, are you on TikTok? Well, I've heard that recently I've been on the For You page, so I thought I'd get on here myself. The President is now on TikTok. It's my honor. By the way, that Trump video um, showing his entrance into TikTok got 174 million views. But what's really important to the youth vote? Joining me now, three Gen Z voters, former Democrat turned Republican, Grace Gunsell, independent voter and former RFK Jr. campaign advisor and TikTok influencer Link Lauren, and Democrat Henry Hushke. Um, welcome to all three of you. I'm so fascinated to have you. I want you to take a look at this poll. Um, this is a Fox News poll. It, it's registered voters under the age of 35. This was before RFK got out of the poll. So 46 percent for Harris, 41 for Trump, 5 percent for RFK, 3 percent for West. So I'm going to go to you, Grace, because, Grace, you were a Democrat. You're starting to lean, you were starting to lean um, Republican, um, but you were debating with RFK Jr. So now, how does this new endorsement by RFK Jr., him dropping out of the race and endorsing Trump? Yeah. So I think for me, Originally, it was a toss-up between RFK Jr. and Trump, but after uh, RFK Jr. dropped out, I think I'm ultimately going to have to vote for Trump just because the disaster that has been wrecked by this current administration and the fact that there are no policies currently listed on Kamala's website or that she is even really talked about has kind of shown to me that it really is for them all vibes no policy as they put it. <laughs> all right well th that's an interesting take i'm going to go to you henry you're a democrat that's been sort of the beef with the kamala campaign at least from the pundits but i'm hearing it from another gen zer um tell me what you think about that is it all vibes i mean there is nothing on our website um with policy and and, and it's very social media heavy um, and TikTok heavy what do you what do you make of that and and, and what do you say yeah, I think I would respectfully disagree with Grace and say that the Harris campaign has put out some really excellent policies, actually, for my generation. Uh, one that I think you can point to is her housing policy. She wants to cut red tape and build three million new homes, as well as give us um, uh, first-time home buyers a $25,000 uh, bonus for uh, down payments. So uh, this alone is just huge policy for my generation, getting us on the housing ladder and helping us achieve the dream of American uh, home ownership. Yeah, you know, um, that's... So that alone is one huge policy. You know, it's been really interesting to me. Um, I have 
children who are in part of your generation. And housing has become this huge issue. Who knew? Uh, because remember they were what? saying, you, you know, you'll rent and you'll be happy, but it turns out. No, no one thought that. That was a lie. <laughs> who knew? Oh my God. These are, these people are so out of touch, dude. Young people actually do want to own their own home. Um, Link, talk about that policy. And also, since you're an influencer, um, how mm -hmm. much of social media emphasis these candidates should have? How much is that going to actually help them versus the substance as we've been talking about? Absolutely. Well, first off, it's great to be with you bright and early this morning. The one thing I can say about young voters is we are not monolithic. But when you look at every single poll, the top concern for young Americans right now is how can I afford a home? How can I keep a roof over my head, have equity in an asset like that in the way that my parents did, in the way that my grandparents did? So for any politician out there looking to bring young people into their coalition, it is not rocket science identify their top concerns, and then use social media, use influencers to reach them and show how you're going to enrich their lives with policies. The one thing I haven't seen from Kamala Harris yet is how is she going to get any of this passed? She's promising 25,000 to first time homeowners. She has no path to getting this passed. And Kamala Harris, it's about 40 days without an interview. She won't answer questions. If you're not willing to sit down and answer questions from voters, you really shouldn't be in charge of the nuclear. I swear to God, there's just something so like weird about the aura of like young republicans like i don't i can't put my finger on it but there is a incredibly like unfuckable vibe it's just i don't know i, I just they they're so villain coded especially odd because he's gay right i suspect like this dude is obviously hitting like campaign lines as well right he's like oh kamala harris has great policies in terms of like home ownership you know he even used the term ladder, home ownership ladder. Like that's that's a guy who's on message. Okay. He's he's read some policy papers. I don't know where they're at, but he's he's figured it out. He's figured out a way to communicate some of these things in a better way than Kamala Harris has. Okay. But like he at least has like a human. There's like a human behind those eyes. There's a soul. Young Republicans always have the most soulless, soulless vibes. Codes. Um, um can I can I or Go ahead. Go ahead, Henry. Oh, I, I just I, I would put the challenge back to President, uh, former President Trump and what how he's going to get anything that he wants passed. You know, the only policy that I've seen from him is a plan to personally dictate interest rates, which is something that has never happened in the history of this country and would greatly destabilize our financial uh, system that we've had. You know, the independent Federal Reserve has been a cornerstone of keeping our economy stable. So. I don't really see what's coming from the Trump side on this either. All right. So I want to ask you guys about this. I was really surprised to hear at the DNC, for example, um, they wine and dine the influencers. They had boat parties, rooftop lounges. <laughs> they had they stocked their private rooms with food and beverages. They had access to the candidates. Um, both parties are trying to do the social media mm -hmm. um, route. How important is that that they actually get in this game? I mean, Kamala's obviously doing better than Donald Trump. <laughs> Some they kicked out. I don't know who you're talking about. Trump in terms of followers, but tell me your thoughts on that. Yeah, I think social media is incredibly important just because the young voters are spending so much time on social media nowadays. Why don't we get the boat party live stream, bro? Because I was at the Palestine protest while the boat party was happening. Okay. You think I'm going to, you think I give a fuck about a yacht party with a bunch of other influencers? But like not even cool influencers, but like no disrespect, but like political influencers. It's like, come on, dude. Dude, if I got a degree from ASU, I would not be prominently featuring that. That's crazy. Okay, that's everything I needed to know about this person. That's like me. That's like me having a Rutgers uh, a degree behind me, like prominently in display. Holy. Glad you know how lame you are for real. I do. Harvard of the Southwest. <laughs> Constant Arizona hate. I like Ludwig. He went to ASU. Come on. Exact. You think that's proving your point? You just made my point for me by bringing up Ludwig. Prominent ASU grad Lud. But I think a lot of times the politicians underestimate social media as it can be a great tool to inform and spread policy and really show us what you want to do 
in the next four years, instead of just using memes and templates just to like get your name out there, I think you know a lot more could be done with social media. Really quick, links. It's wow. your Thank you for the brilliant insight. Influencer, I got to get your thoughts on this. Yeah, there's nothing that's ever going to beat retail politics. But if you're trying to reach these young people, you got to go to social media. Only 9% of Gen Z watch traditional TV news on a daily basis. They're not going to see these news shows. You got to get them on TikTok, X, and Instagram. But you got to have content X. that answers their questions and top concerns. Young people love calling Twitter X and being on Twitter in general. Less vibes, less coconut memes, more policies, and more substance. Wow. Well, I know that you were advising the dog. You can't be a RFK Jr. platform guy who's now hyping up Trump and be like, more policies, please. Like, what policies is Trump running on other than like Hitlerian deportation? That's crazy. The RFK campaign. Are you going to join the Trump campaign? I'm very happy being a political commentator, doing political analysis, and calling it like I see it. I reach <laughs> millions of people each day on social media. I welcome everyone from the left. The oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. All right. Senator well. JD Vance.